Hello, my name is Shane Coughlin, and I'm the general manager of something called the Open Chain Project. I'm here today to talk to you about the future of open source process management. Open source software is very useful. It allows us access to technology without having to pay money for it. Of course, open source is not truly free. There are some requirements to access the software. These requirements are contained in licenses, and we have to follow these licenses to use open source software. Managing that and managing software development is all about good processes. Now, in the beginning of open source, we didn't have shared processes. Everyone had to develop their processes on their own. They had to work out how to manage engineers. They had to work out how to follow the licenses. Everyone did their best, and many people did a really good job. But, of course, with everyone trying to do their own thing, mistakes would happen. And, in companies that might have limited resources, it was more difficult to invent new processes. Luckily, open source is now very mature. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to create our own processes from zero. The market has shared a lot of information about great open source process management. And today and tomorrow, open source process management is easier than ever before. Let's start with the very basics. Open source code is super useful. You don't have to pay money to access the code. You don't have to pay money to use the code in your products. This gives you a huge advantage. You can create a new product based on open source code really quickly. You can save a lot of money in research and development. You can focus your engineering time and your engineering budget on the unique code that makes your product different. Now, because open source is freely available, it's regarded as being very easy to use, and that's true. It's regarded as having no payment required to use it, and that's true. But of course, open source software does have some requirements. It does have some costs. These costs aren't about money. They're about behavior. To use open source software, you have to follow the licenses it comes with. These licenses have various requirements. And if you don't follow those requirements, you're not allowed to use that software. So we can say that the cost of open source is not money. The cost of open source is good process management. This is simple, this is sensible, and this is fair. After all, open source is third party intellectual property. You need to respect the intellectual property created by others. And if you release open source software, they need to respect the intellectual property created by you. It's a fair and balanced system. But how do we do it? 20 years ago, in open source, we had to invent our own processes. We would start from scratch, we would build them out, and we would do our best. Nowadays, we have shared processes, and we even have international standards to manage open source code. I mentioned that I run the OpenChain project. This is a project in the Linux Foundation, and it is one of many hundreds of projects under that foundation. Our project is not about software. The OpenChain project is all about process management. In fact, we have the ISO standard for open source license compliance. 
Our ISO standard is called ISO IEC 5230. This standard is a very simple and short standard to allow every company in the world, in every market, to adopt basic process management for open source. It identifies where the processes need to exist. And we have supporting material, lots of reference material, to help you decide what to put in that process point. The mental model you should have is that 20 years of experience from companies across so many markets was combined and distilled, condensed, simplified, and turned into a seven page ISO standard. It's intentionally very easy for smaller companies to pick up. We are very well aware that many companies have limited resources, especially for things outside of software development. People are really focused on product to market. Any process management needs to be light and cheap to use. The context of something like the open chain ISO standard is that we wanted to help the supply chain. That's why it's called open chain. It has nothing to do with blockchain. <laughs> it's about the supply chain. We wanted a way for even the smallest supplier in the world to have the same basic quality approach to open source process management that even the biggest company in the world might have. We've been working with the market for around seven years. We've been an ISO standard for around two years. And we have seen so many companies from so many sectors engage with us and work with us and adopt the standard. Obviously, we are doing a lot in China. We have our own WeChat group with around 230 participants from, as far as I can tell, around 200 companies. We work closely with organizations under the Chinese government like CAICT and CESI. We're fortunate to have both of them in our work group for China. We work with the China Academy of Sciences. Basically, we're trying to work with everyone in China who has the same goal. The goal is a supply chain where open source is super easy to use and it's super easy to manage things like license compliance and security. Now, you might have thought, given that OpenChain's ISO standard is focused on license compliance, that license compliance was the only thing we cared about. That's not quite true. I just mentioned security, and there's a very good reason for that. The basic processes for license compliance are the same as the basic processes for security. The idea is that when you bring software into your company, you identify it. You know what the software is, what version it is at, where it came from, and what conditions, like licenses, come with it. Our standard also identifies inside your company. What software are you developing on? What are the connections between the software? Make a note. And that means when you're distributing software, when you begin to shift software outside of your company, you can double check what's there, what version, what conditions, and you can make sure it matches when you checked earlier. Much less surprises, much less complications, and much easier to manage license compliance and security. In fact, we've been working on the security issue for a couple of years, and we've produced reference material to help understand that and open source as well. Our work, of course, is not just an ISO standard. An ISO standard is really important and it's super useful. But in the end, you have to get the market into a position where it's ready for the ISO standard. You have to create a situation where companies can help each other. You need a genuine community. We've done that by building local work groups in local languages 
in China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, India, Germany, the UK, and the US. In particular, China, Japan, Korea, these three work groups are very active. And we're very happy to see that developments in the local languages are also being shared with the world. This is incredibly valuable. If there was one criticism I would have of open source and knowledge sharing is that traditionally open source tended to be English language, then translated into other languages. Nowadays, we see things like process management coming from other jurisdictions, such as Japan, and then be being translated into English, being adopted by the English market. That's what we need, the type of sharing and community that allows us all to do better. Now I want to pause and I want to focus our conversation again. I mentioned that open source process management is very important. I mentioned that there's an ISO standard for open source process management. I explained that this process management is focused on licensing, but also helps deal with security and other issues where you need to identify and track software. I told you about international communities and local communities operating in local languages. And I gave you the impression that there was a overall community of companies who use open source, helping each other with process management. All of that is accurate. But of course, the question we must have, the question we must ask is, what does that mean for tomorrow? I told you that the Open Chain project was really about the supply chain, and that's the key for tomorrow. Open Chain has the ISO standard for open source license compliance. We work on security, we work on other topics, but our mission and our vision is slightly broader. What we're truly interested in is a trusted supply chain, and that's the future. We need to have a supply chain where we can trust that things like security and license compliance are being managed in the same way by companies, that companies all over the world are using the type of processes that help us to get things right, the type of processes that we know work, and especially the type of processes that make it easier to understand and support each other. If we are all using an ISO standard, it doesn't really matter if some of us speak Mandarin, some of us speak English, some of us speak Korean. We know where each company has the process points. We know what type of process approach they're using. Our future is about scaling. Currently, we reach thousands of companies, but we have to reach tens of thousands to help make sure that the supply chain is trustable. We are in the middle of that. The Open Chain Project does it by welcoming companies into our community. We have no restrictions, we have no costs, we have no conditions. Every company is welcome to join our work groups, meet their peers, meet companies from other markets, and learn from each other. We also address this issue by working with governments. I mentioned in China that the Open Chain Project is collaborating with organizations linked to the Chinese Ministry of Trade. It's the same in countries like Japan. And of course, we work with all types of other entities out there. For instance, academic entities like the Chinese Academy of Sciences and vendors which help support open source companies around the world. Some vendors make automation and tooling, for example, Synopsys. Some vendors provide third-party certification or other process services like PwC. In China, by way of example, there are several companies and organizations offering just this type of stuff. I'm going to name our friends at CAICT as a third-party certifier as a good example. The collection of companies interacting, the collection of entities interacting, and 
On another side, the inclusion of our ISO standard in procurement contracts creates a type of snowball effect. As more companies enter our ecosystem, more and more companies become aware of our ISO standard and more and more companies adopt it. Outside of our direct community, of course, one of the main ways that our standard is shared is through procurement. Customer companies ask their suppliers to use the standard. We want to make sure that any company getting that request from a customer is very quickly able to understand the standard and adopt it. And that's why I'm here. The future is pretty clear. We have open chain ISO IEC 5230 for open source process management. We have other ISO standards like SPDX ISO IEC 5. 962 for Software Bill of Materials. And of course, there are other standards again regarding how you do other things like export control, functional safety, and so on. You don't have to make up your processes. You don't have to make up your Software Bill of Materials. We've standardized that. Companies all around the world shared their best practices to do that. And we've even created free tooling and automation in case companies want to use their own tooling. There are projects out there like Open Source Review Toolkit, ORT, also under the Linux Foundation. And these are open source projects. They are open source tools for open source process management. They can help you with your compliance. They can help you with your security. They cost nothing to get started with. Long story short, the future is something we can already see. We have built open source standards for process management. We have built open source standards for software bill of materials. We have even built automation so that anyone in the world can begin using tooling to get better process management or better software bill of materials without having to pay third parties. We've worked with governments and other institutes around the world to not just get help, but also to include open source and open source process management in policy. We've worked with vendor companies who might be able to provide tooling or certification to also provide those options to you, to user companies. Our future is building on that, standardizing ourselves around that, and making sure that in open source, there are no surprises. We all know how to manage it. We all know how to use it. We all know how to share it. We all know how to obey the licenses, to manage the security, and maybe most important, we all know how to fix things when something goes wrong. Our future is a smooth supply chain, and a smooth supply chain is a cheap efficient supply chain. We shouldn't be wasting too much money and time on compliance or security. We should be using the best practices in the fastest way possible to get it done. And we should free up our resources to make even better products for the future. Now watching this video, you might be thinking, that sounds great, but that doesn't match my current situation. Maybe I have no budget. Maybe I have no time. Maybe we have customers asking for lots of different software bill of materials. Maybe we have customers demanding different processes. It sounds nice to have a unified model, but it doesn't sound like my reality. I can understand that. And if that is your situation, I have only one request. Please join our China workgroup, the Open Chain China workgroup. We have it on WeChat. Please join that workgroup and share a little bit of your story. And I think you will suddenly find so many companies similar to yourself that have found ways to make their life easier. And they will gladly, happily share their approach and their processes. Their goal is the same as my goal, which ultimately is your goal that using open source 
is not tiring, is not expensive, is not difficult, but instead gets great products to markets faster. With that, I will finish. Thank you for being part of making open source better. Thank you if you're new for listening and thank you especially to all of you for what comes next as we work closely together in any language to make sure that our supply chain is trustable, cheap, efficient, and welcoming to innovation.